everybody, it's Sam here. Thank you for watching. So today I'm going to show you how I've made this spell box gift box. This is a deconstructed shadow box. I've got lots of these on the channel in all different sizes. I've got ones with compartments, double versions, there's loads. So I will have my shadow box gift box playlist coming up here and I'll have some videos towards the end as well. It's a great style. This I think would be great for Christmas as well. Maybe, maybe it's like the night before Christmas book or just a lovely gift box for any kind of book lovers. It's just a really fun style. So that's how it looks from the side. I've kept this, I have done book boxes before. Um, I done another one not too um, long ago, actually. You can emboss on the side of this, that looks really effective. And you can have a dangle, you know, punch a hole and all that kind of stuff if you want, but I decided not to. I've added these messy kind of faux book pages on the side there. And then when you open it up, you've got all your space inside there to fill with treats. This side here I've left just as it is for the minute because I may well put the person's name on here that I'm going to be giving this to. So I have left that for the moment, but you can see that easily folds down. I've used my new Halloween collection to decorate all of this and I'll show you all that product next. So let's get started. So I'm using the Mater Surprise Chunky Alphabet die set and then this is all of the Halloween. I think I'm going to use everything apart from the stickers. Maybe it depends if I add acetate or not. So the papers in the pack there, all the ephemera and the washi strips there as well. So first we will make the shadow box. So I've already done half of it. So we're going to do that now. So you'll want two pieces of six and a half by nine. And along that six and a half side, you're going to score at half, three, three and a half and six. So do that twice. And then again, you'll want two pieces of six and a half by five. And along the six and a half side, you're going to score at half, three, three and a half and six. And it doesn't matter which side you do these scorings on, but if you just rotate it like me, pop it back in, you're then going to score at half and four and a half down to the second score line. So you're going to come past this first one down to the second. Again, at four and a half past the first score line down to the second. Okay, whilst I've got the scoreboard out, I'll give you the measurements for the case. So this is a piece of eight and a quarter by nine and a half. And along the eight and a quarter side, you want to score at five and a quarter and then at eight. So you're going to have a quarter inch tab here. You then want to score at every score line between those two score lines. So every one eighth to score and that will give you this faux book spine there it's really effective and then for the back or the front depending on how you stick this in this is a piece of five and a quarter by nine and a half you want to fold and burnish all your score lines now okay so first we'll start off with this piece here so I've just folded all of those score lines there the right hand side here I'm then just going to cut just a little slither off this side you're now going to add your glue to. So whatever side you snip from is the side you're going to add your glue. So I'm just going to run my glue all the way down this tab. And by cutting that little bit away, it just means that your side will fold and it will be completely square. So you're then going to fold that one over. You just want it so you've got the large section there and then the tab and then fold that one over the top. And you'll see it will be completely flat. Whereas if we hadn't cut that away, you'll probably find that would have been a bit bulky there. And then just give that a good burnish and then I like to always fold it back the other way. Again, just burnish all those lines. Okay, so you want to have two of those pieces. And then with this one, with the side, you want the end facing you where you've got those extra score lines down the side here. And you're going to cut up past the first score line up to the second, so just all the way down there. And then you're going to cut across. Okay, so you've got something like that. And then this end here, again, just cut a little bit away. And then add your glue. And again, fold it over. So you've just got that piece and the one with the glue, and then fold that down. And give that all a good burnish. Okay, and you can see my other piece there. Then you're going to take one of your long pieces here, and I always like it so that the fold is at the bottom and the join is facing inside the box. And this is going to sit inside like so and then i take this one again join everything at the bottom slot that one in like so and then this one 
I'll pop it that way, it's easier to get it all in screen. It's going to sit. And that is your deconstructed oh, shadow box. Okay. Now, if you want to, you could stick that down onto this piece here. But you'd want it so that one side butts up to the left here in this case. Okay. You should have a little overhang at the top and the bottom and on the side there. However, I think it needs a bit more support for what I'm probably going to put in it. So I'm going to cut myself a piece of card to give this its base and then I'm going to stick it into the book. So you'll need to cut yourself a piece that's just under five by nine, just under five by nine. Okay, so I've got my piece there. So take these all out and you're going to add your glue to the bottom there and just inside the triangular piece like so and then slot that in. Make sure you've got a nice right angle. If you've got something like this, the T-square ruler, pop that in and stick it down. And that will ensure you've got that nice right angle. And then again, come to this end here and I'm going to add some glue. And again, down in the corner there. So this is to tack it in place, but because we've now got this piece, that's going to hold it all together. I'm just going to pop that one in. And I'm going to just use this. Make sure that's all nice and straight. And then, and whilst that's drying, I can take this piece here and add the glue on all of those sections. And then just sit both of them in the ends there. Kind of bring it up. If you squeeze the sides out a bit, you'll be able to just slide that all together. It should just slot into place and you'll find it will just all of a sudden become a much stronger structure. And then you can see it's going to fit perfectly now onto that piece. Now, because I cut that down slightly smaller, I'm just going to run my glue and then I'm just going to take and see a little bit of overhang just there. Just trim that off and just flip it over there. You'll be able to see and line that up. So now we've got our shadow box gift box. So next I'm going to take this piece here. And what I've done is I just added a bit of a curl into it. So just use your burnishing tool there and just add a bit of shape like so. And then I'm going to add some glue all down the quarter inch. So it is a small tab because, again, I was using my A4 card but all the way down there. Now, you could st you could add the glue to the back if you want and stick this underneath, but no one's really going to look at the back of this. So I'm actually going to have it on the top and then it looks neat from the inside. Again, you're not really going to see much of the inside anyway because the box does cover a lot of it. But make sure you only go to that end score line. Now, I want to decorate this a little bit before I attach this, but just to give you a visual, that is going to sit inside here. So there's a nice border. And then this is going to come up and around. And you'll see you should have a nice curve here. So it looks like your book. And then we're going to add our fastening onto here. But once I add my mats and layers, it's going to become a lot stronger. Um, but I think, I think it's going to look really good. Okay, so I'm going to decorate the front first. So I'm going to flip this over. And what I've done is I've cut myself. Because I'm using an 8x8 eight eight paper pad, this is a 9.5 width. So obviously there's going to be a massive frame. So I've cut this piece of holographic to 5x9.25. And, and that's going to stick down on there. If you want the same sizes to cover these as well, then just cut yourself more. And then I've just rounded the corners. This is the Creative Craft Products Corner Punch. So just pop it on the card, push the punch down, and you'll get that rounded corner. It's also got a notch on it as well, so you can use it to make envelopes. And then I've got this stripe piece, which I'm going to sit in the middle, but I'm just going to have an equal border at the top and the bottom. And then from the ephemera pack, I've pulled out the Haunted House. And then I have... 
die cut the word spellbook using my chunky alphabet there. I've cut it twice. I've cut it in a holographic card and also and in a lime green colour, which is from the coordinating paper pack. This one here, the Craft Perfect. And then I've stuck them together, but I've offset them. So you'll see, you know, you've got a little bit of the holographic coming through there. And then I've added my accent glaze. So they're nice and shiny. Probably going to also pop a little bit of foam behind them. Oh, that was it. Against that stripe, they look quite busy. So I'm going to use some vellum. I'm going to trim it to three for a minute. And I'm going to wrap the ends around the stripey. I think that's still too much. I just want the... the the spell book to sit over the top of this so i'm going to bring it down to two and a half and this is a good tip if you've ever got any kind of fonts or stamping you want to do sometimes it can get really lost against busy paper if you put some vellum over it still shows the paper but it allows your sentiment to really pop out like so there we go so you can see now how better that looks and then i'll just wrap the ends of that vellum behind this stripey piece and then stick that down And then for the side of the book here, I've got a gel pen to give it some faux pages. You could probably do this before. To be honest, if it's a bit wonky, I'm not too worried. It's I'm not looking for perfect. She says perfect and then completely messes it up. But I actually think if I do that a few times, it will look quite good. Yeah, so you can see what I'm going to do now. So I'm going to spend some time getting all this decoration done. Okay, so I've decorated the front, which I love. I think it looks really, really cool. So next I'm going to stick this inside here. But before I do that, I want to stick some ribbon just behind there. So actually I'm going to just got this purple ribbon here. And I'm just going to cut it in half. It's about 15 inches. It's going to probably get cut down. I'm just going to add some glue there. And just let that kind of grab it kind of in the middle of this piece and then I'm going to add my construction glue so this is now going to make this really really strong and then I'm going to you want to make sure you focus on this left side it needs to be butted right up to that base fold see that it folds around you should have a quarter inch border around the three sides top i bring it up so i'm not sure if it shows you can see there it just makes sure you got that same border but you can also see my lines there so i just went all messy with them i think it looks quite good and then just spread all that glue out and then whilst that's drying i'm going to cut a piece of pattern paper to go in here so you want it to be just under four by eight just a slither under that and again i'm going to add construction glue so you will be able to put something heavy in this okay so just make sure that ribbon is really secure i'm just pushing down on it there so now when this comes around i'm going to have another piece of ribbon under there and then you'll be able to tie that off on the side so I'm going to do the same now, roughly in the middle. And then I'm going to cut the same size piece of holographic card and I'm going to stick that. I 
Okay, so that is the finished spell book. So I've just secured the sides there. So now I'm just going to do that, open it up. I've got my mirrored card there, which I may add something on top to personalise it. And I've got all my space there to fill the treats. So I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial from me today. I will have some other of those shadow box boxes that I mentioned at the beginning. They will be coming up now. I would have shared the playlist as well. So check those out. You might want to go and watch those next. All of the products that I've used will be linked in the description box below the video. And if you've enjoyed today, please give me a thumbs up. It really does help out the channel. And I'll be back again very soon with more tutorials. Take care and I'll see you then. Bye.